A veil of tranquility as the curtain comes down. The stars brightly greet us as the silence surrounds. Each song that we sang, fond memory records. Like the stars in the night sky, all of one accord. When I was growing up, there was 32 small businesses in Dundee Hall. 32, and they all made a bit of a living. There were 30, yes. 30 or 14 pubs. Yeah. I was there at school, right? Yeah. But you haven't done the one with the post the books. Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. sad, isn't it? It is, isn't it? And all of them, they all live them, they're the living. Mm -hmm. You go to your chair to them and things like people are poor, but they all really live here, they do. Virtually every single premises that, uh, bar one or two, uh, when I was going to school in Melody Hubble and Go, they were all. Uh, they, were, they were all open, uh, all the little all the little shops. They, they used to be a fair in Beldy Hub every month. And uh, it was all horse and cars. And I, I think I can remember seeing it at some stage, but maybe it is only from listening to my mother telling me. But she often told me that her father, when he would be going down to the post office, he'd have to go down beyond the bank to cross the road because the, the, the back of the horse car and, and the, the next horse that his head would be up against the back of the car, the place would be absolutely lined mm -hmm. with, and there was fierce life in the place. And what was Valley de Hab like in 1976? Vibrant. People all over the place. Um, everybody did their shopping there. They had the post office. Um, we had a hardware store, Frank Vaughn's, mm -hmm. three grocery stores. Uh, Really packed on a Sunday, you know, people going to Mass and to the church. And uh, then they did their shopping after that, and then, well, Hubby had a few drinks. It was great. It was a great place to be. And the streets were always crowded and kids playing in the street. So the one was below now, you had Nora Lynch's a pub, you know, a, a lady that, uh, you know, she never married. And, uh, you know, she, she, you know, when she died, the business died and she had no one to take it on. Um, I suppose it would be a bit like Anya Daly, but all like, you know, when she goes, more than likely to, you know, to, to become a, yeah. a private house. Uh, well, Jackie Farrell retired, so nobody ever took that over. And uh, Mrs. Cochran, with the other drapery, she, that closed down. And just one by one, places were closing. The only places that were still open was the, the pubs. That point of view, definitely, the, the, you know, the, the, the village itself, uh, the, the life has gone out of it, you know, if you don't have people going in and out and spending money and, and spending money is the key to the whole thing because it generates, you know, it generates, a, 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 you know, a, a, an energy in the village and, and that just doesn't have it. I mean, mm -hmm. uh, that's a huge loss across the road. I mean, it's, it's, it's a big part of the village and to see it boarded up like that is, is a shame. The stars brightly greet us as the silence surrounds each song that we sang on the memory records like the stars in the night. There's no great amount of employment here anymore. I mean, we were at either tourism or our building, and the building is, is, is pretty much ghost at the moment. And mm -hmm. our tour season is only a matter of six mm -hmm. to eight weeks. Mm -hmm. So it's uh, yeah. just hard to see villages like Belly Hub getting any better than they are. It's, I've done 35 years. Uh, it's only been my own for the last seven or eight years. You oh. know, I'm postmistress for seven or eight years, but I've a lot of experience. Yeah. I've seen a lot of changes in this place. Yeah, we're, we're, we're under severe threat, really, and we're, we're our biggest, I suppose, we're under threat from people, from people not using us, really. Uh, it's you know the world of, the world of computers and the government are encour encouraging people for to get their payment directly into their bank account or whatever. Yeah, social welfare is our biggest payment, and if we lose social welfare, we wouldn't make enough money to keep going. This government, last government, all governments, um, there's no encouragement, there's no incentive for 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 anyone to to, to start off a business. And I said it to so many councillors, of course the councillors have really have no great say in it because even though they have, they could vote on it, but they won't because the government has, uh, 
uh, allocate X amount of money to Cork County Council, to all the councils, and they have to vote to increase rates and increase things in order to pay for filling the holes and the, the roads and the various things like that. And, and, and um, I mean, I think people don't mind paying tax when they're making money. Mm. Just when they're, they're, as I said, you're being taxed now on, on, on you know, water and stuff that you were never taxed before. And mm. I know someone has to pay for the water, but I mean, if the water was good quality, you could drink it. People wouldn't mind. <laughs> See, I'm saying every day, use the post office. If you don't use it, you'll lose it, you know. I mean, uh, to me, they should, if something has started off, he should be given rates free for at least the first year to give him a chance to, to you know, to, 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 you have to start making money before you can pay it. I, I, I always said that if, 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 if we could, if we could encourage someone that went away and made a lot of money to come back and open up some some form of, of, of a manufacturing unit of some description or an IT, IT thing or a call center or something here. That I mean, if there was 20 or 30 people employed here, yeah. it would make a huge, huge difference to the village yeah. and to generate at least a life in it again. must be the best community in the world for doing festivals. Uh, it's cool to have some version and it's to support and fair. It's all going to be a ton of us now have to go there. Chairman, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Belly the Hop Festival. I don't really meet up with a lot of people during the summer, so it's nice to see my friends here. Mm. And the races are fun as well. <laughs> Basically bowling with the turnip. You, you throw the turnip up the you road? You throw the turnip up the hill, you run after it. If you lose your turnip, it doesn't really matter, you grab someone else's. <laughs> and you bundle yourself over the line. <laughs> and then you win a turnip. <laughs> do the um, festivals like these, or any of the festivals in Bailey to have, do they, do they make a difference to your business? Of course they do, yeah. I mean, they're vital business. Because in, I think people need something to come out anymore. They don't just come out for the sake of coming out. They come out if there's something on, and all these festivals are quite important. Yeah, certainly are. Have your attention, please. Oh, you're all very welcome tonight to the final of the Valley of the Hawk Summer Festival charades. Huge organisation goes into it. it means a lot to community spirit. Um, that all the local people put so much hard work and effort into arranging all this. It's almost obsession, and actually it's ongoing all the year. The programme has to be organised, um, the publicity has to be thought about, uh, obtaining uh, sponsorship. I applied for um, a grant with Cork County Council, uh, which I've just um, finished doing this month, um, and every year the uh, Hoops that one has to jump through, and more, you know. What moves you to, to do this um, for the community? I suppose, really, you know, these are the little things that keep our village alive, really. You know, we've six or seven small festivals now uh, over the year, and uh, each one helps the people and the business people uh, to stay alive because, you know, we're after going through five or six terrible hard years, and uh, hopefully, this will keep the people alive. I feel very strongly about what's happening in Ireland at the present moment. 
But I feel that the only way that I can do something about it is actually the immediate <laughs> local community. Holiday makers and visitors are persuaded to stop. And there has to be something happening here for them to stop for. For a community to thrive, it means that um, members of the community have to put in effort to uh, volunteering. And I see this all the time with the tidy town, the different festivals that go on. And none of the people actually um, get any financial gain out of this, you know. There's always someone coming around the corner and betting that I'll be a hand. There's an old Irish saying called Erska Kela Verdinadina. It just means in the shadow of the people, in, in the shadow of each other, the people live. And down about the hub, we all kind of live in each other's shadow. And when you're very busy and you're running around with pubs and farms and everything else, you kind of forget that the people around you are very important and they have great skills, great resources, and they're a joy to be with. And the festival gives them that week where you can let the hair down, have the crack, have the, the pipes and the cure, and long may it continue.